So now that we know how to uh, assign oxidation numbers, let's actually talk about how we use those to determine what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. So the way we do this is if we have a chemical reaction occurring, we go through and label everything in the chemical reaction with its oxidation number. So we figure out the oxidation number for every element in the reaction and then anything that increases its oxidation state from reactants to products, that is an oxidation, and anything that has a decrease in its oxidation state is a reduction, or is being reduced. So for example here in this uh, chemical reaction, carbon is reacting with sulfur to make carbon sulfide. The carbon goes from zero to plus four, it's an increase in the oxidation number, and so that is an oxidation, whereas the sulfur goes from zero to minus two, so that is a reduction. And again, you will always, always, always have both occurring. You will never have two oxidations or two reductions. It is always something is being reduced and something is being oxidized. It's the only possibility. Okay. So let's look at a few examples here and see if we can figure out what's being reduced and what is being oxidized. So in this first example here, it's pretty straightforward. We have magnesium. Rule one applies to this. It is just magnesium. Same thing with the oxygen. It is just oxygen. It is the free elemental form of oxygen because remember oxygen is one of those seven diatomic elements. So we have zero for the oxidation number for both of these. And then in, in the molecule over here, uh, we really don't even need to bother with going through the whole set of rules, although if we did, we'd still get the right answer. But um, we know that this, uh, according to rule uh, four, this is gonna be plus two because that is a uh, group two metal. And so then because the whole molecule has to have a sum of zero, then the oxygen is negative two, which um, the oxygen wanted to be anyway. Because if you noticed, all the oxygens we've seen up to this point um, have been negative two or zero if they're just in O2. So given these two values then, you notice here the magnesium goes from zero to plus two. That is an increase in the oxidation number, so it is oxidized and the oxygen goes from zero to minus two, so it is reduced. So the, the nomenclature here is a little bit backwards. If you're just looking at the oxidation numbers, it seems perfectly fine. The thing that is increasing in oxidation number is oxidized, and the thing that is decreasing in oxidation number is reduced. However, it's kind of backwards when you think about it in terms of what's actually happening to the electrons, because the thing that is reduced is actually gaining electrons, and the thing that is oxidized is losing them. So it's, it's a little bit backwards. So just, uh, I would suggest try to think of it in terms of the actual numbers themselves. That's how I remember it. Okay, let's, uh, let's do another one here. Actually, why don't you give this one a shot real quick on your own, and then uh, we'll talk about this next one um, together. So go ahead and pause the video here and see if you can work out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced in this chemical reaction. All right, so hopefully you found that the calcium has an oxidation number of zero, and so does the hydrogen. This is because those are both the free elemental forms of those elements. Again, hydrogen is one of the seven, so H2 is the free elemental form. Um, HCl here has a sum of zero for its oxidation uh, numbers, and hydrogen is actually the first thing that we come across so it would be plus one, which means the chlorine must be minus one. And then over here, the calcium is gonna be plus two based on rule four, and the chlorine is going to be minus one. 
It's actually the same molecule we saw earlier over here. So, if we look at what happened, calcium went from 0 to plus 2, hydrogen went from plus 1 to 0, and chlorine did nothing. And that's perfectly fine. Not everything in the reaction has to be oxidized or reduced. As long as one thing is being oxidized and one other thing is being reduced, that's all we need. We don't need every single thing involved in the reaction to be oxidized or reduced. So it's perfectly fine that the chlorine is the same on the left as it is on the right. But the calcium here is being oxidized and the hydrogen is being reduced. Alright, so let's talk about this next one together. The main reason I want to talk about this is because I want to save you some work. So if you notice here, we have nitrate on both sides of the reaction here. You could go through and work out all of the um, the oxidation numbers for these. And it actually wouldn't really be all that bad for us at this point since we figured those out just a minute ago, uh, or in the last video anyway, uh, with NO3 minus. It wouldn't be terribly bad. So you could go ahead and put in the oxygens are minus 2 and the nitrogen is plus 5 and it's the same thing over here. And you could work out everything else. But you actually don't have to do that. An easier way of doing that is because the nitrate stays the same from left to right, that tells us that there's no oxidation or reduction happening with the nitrate. If the nitrate was being reduced or oxidized, it wouldn't be nitrate anymore. It would turn into something else. And so because the nitrate stays as nitrate, we can essentially just treat this as one uh, unique ion. Um, so we could just say this whole thing, we're just going to reduce that down to an oxidation number of negative 1. And since we have two of them together, it would be negative two, but each of the nitrates would be negative one. And so because we get negative two from the nitrates, that means that the nickel here must be plus two. Because again, this is a neutral molecule. The molecule as a whole is not charge, uh, charged, so that tells us, uh, and rule number three then tells us that the sum of all the oxidation states inside of here must be zero. And so if the nitrates are giving us negative two, then that means the nickel here must be plus two and the iron here must be plus two because it's in the same situation. Now again, if you don't feel comfortable treating the polyatomic ion as just this block of oxidation numbers that sums to a certain value. Again, feel free, go through, work out the oxidation numbers just like we did before, but I think this will save you a little bit of time. So then the only other things are the iron and the nickel. Both of those are just in their free elemental state. They're not bonded to anything, they're not charged. And so <coughs> if we take a look here, uh, the iron goes from 0 to plus 2, so it is oxidized, and the nickel goes from plus 2 to 0, and so it is reduced. All right, so then the last one here, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a shot as well. This is going to be a little bit different than what we've seen before, but if you follow the rules, you will get the correct answer. So go ahead and uh, pause the video and give that one a shot. All right, so hopefully you found lithium is zero and hydrogen is zero. You might have made the mistake of saying that lithium is plus one because it's in group one, it's a group one metal, but notice that rule number four does not say all group one metals have a oxidation number of plus one. It says group one metals in their compounds. So if it's in a molecule, if it's part, if it's part of a larger compound, then it will be plus one. 
but this is not in a larger compound, it's just lithium. And so it's zero, same thing with H2. And then with LiH, um, with the, I believe the name of that would be lithium hydride, is the name of that. Uh, if you follow the rules, what you'll see is that the sum is zero, because it's a neutral molecule. The first thing we come across is actually the lithium. Again, in rule four. Rule five would tell us that hydrogen should be plus one. That's what has been every single time we've seen it up to this point, uh, with the exception again of H2. Every time it's been in a molecule, hydrogen has been plus one. However, because that rule is in rule five, this sum is more important. So hydrogen is not plus one. That would give us a sum of plus two. Instead, hydrogen is minus one. And so in this case, the hydrogen is being reduced and the lithium is being oxidized. So we do have to pay attention here. Even if you've, you know, every time I've seen hydrogen up to this point, it's always been plus one when it's in a molecule. It doesn't mean that it's always going to be that way. Um, you need to follow the rules, follow the steps, and you will get to the right answer. All right, we're going to call it there for this video. In the next one, we're going to start talking pizzas. So I'll see you there.